Right, we welcome you to another episode of Learning Stories. This is a show where we interview a diverse set of learners from the 21st century. In each episode of this show, we interview a guest who has a story to share about how they acquired a set of skills and knowledge in a creative and innovative manner. In the process, we hope to uncover a new understanding of learning as conceptualized, imagined, and narrated by the guest in our show. In this season of Learning Stories, we're focused on young Indians doing amazing things in urban India in their own unique contexts. And in the process, they are defining the future of our country. Today's guest is someone I met on, a, on an experience I was part of called Jagriti Yatra. And I was really inspired by her journey as a software engineer in India. So let me tell you a little bit about her background before we jump into this conversation. Hilori is from Surat, Gujarat, and she studied at the Bhulka Bhavan School a well-known Gujarati medium school. From ninth grade, she dreamed of joining IIT and started preparing for it in Surat. After 12th class, she went to Kota for a year to study at Vibrant Academy for a G second attempt. She then completed her B.Tech in biotechnology from IIT Roorkee. Her career began at Microland, an IT MNC in Bangalore, where she worked as a software developer for three years. Now, She's a senior software engineer for over a year at Flowworks, which is a startup focused on generative AI. With hands-on experience in designing, developing, and deploying SaaS products, Hillary is deeply passionate about how technology can drive transformational change. She's motivated to make an impact in the world, especially for the underprivileged, and she's really inspired by Sal Khan's journey at Khan Academy. And when she's not working, she enjoys reading and traveling. So, Elori, I really, really enjoyed reading that intro and now, you know, to jump into your journey. Um, I know you're, you know, uh, an accomplished software engineer in your career, but before you got to this point, I'm curious about your childhood. You know, what was Elori curious about um, as a young person growing up in India? And uh, did you always have an interest in science? And maybe you can tell me a little bit about your parents' influence on your thinking as well. Thank you for having me. And thank you for doing this show. Um, yeah, let me start with my journey as a kid. <laughs> so I grew up in a very safe uh, surrounding kind of an environment. Um, I had like role models to look at when I like saw my close family and teachers at my school, uh, principal, all these people. They were like very, I would say, influential on me. I was a good kid. so. Uh, I used to do whatever, you know, uh, they were expected, uh, ex- expecting of me and uh, I was getting the appreciation that I liked. I, I tried to do the best uh, academically in sports or whatever, wherever I got the opportunity. Coming to the science part that you said, Jules one is a science fiction writer and I uh, read, started reading its books when I was in sixth seventh grade um in Gujarati surprisingly so at that time I think uh, you know most of the books that I had at home were in Gujarati and uh, even the textbooks and everything I was studying in a Gujarati medium school but like fortunately uh, these kind of books were translated in Gujarati so I got a hang of those I think best scientists uh, in 20th century and things like that those kind of books were also there uh, available at that time and it was very interesting like I was genuinely curious about the field and you know the kind of things that people accomplished in that field I think around 8th like 7th 8th standard when I got this maturity that I should think about a career or like what I should become after growing up at that time I started thinking about a lot of options and it was very confusing I think it is confusing for most of us yeah at that time fortunately I went to Mumbai uh, at my cousin's place first time I stepped into a metro and my eighth vacation I think and uh, she was she's two years older than me so she was exploring uh, the what is it called junior college options that she had at that time and uh, I came across these pamphlets where you know people they had written that uh, x many people went into IIT from our college and things like that our junior college and things like that so it got me thinking that you know what is it and why it is written like that uh, in this kind of 
advertisement pamphlets uh, of colleges so i went home uh, i asked my father we talked about it and at that time i was fortunate to have a laptop at my home so he encouraged me to google about it and you know get to know about it and uh, then like i found out that so many great people that i know today they are they were iit in before and you know they are doing well in any field that you can think about so i was like you know problem solved i can be an iit and then later on think about you know what i want to become because i can become anything i want at that time right but if i choose now that you know i want to go to medicine or i want to uh, maybe uh, pursue history then i don't think i will have the, those many options that i might have when i become an iit and so that kind of thinking got me into preparing for uh, this exam and i was fortunate enough that uh, some my father's friend was in uh, physics like he was like a well known name in physics at that time in surat uh, in 11 12 and he found out a good coaching for uh, this joint entrance examination preparation and i started with foundation course there uh, in 9th itself so 9th 10th foundation course and then 11th 12th the actual je preparation i did and that was the first time when i like read books in english i would say uh, academic books not like uh, fiction books or something like that uh, but yeah it was interesting like i had a dream i had a goal i knew it was hard i knew uh, like whatever i was studying was very interesting and uh, it was a good enough reason to pursue it so yeah that's how i most of my like school days went by i would say that's amazing hilary i have so many questions like you know were your parents always uh, pushing you and encouraging you and did you have like other engineers like around you and your family that sort of uh, you know pushed you to go down that path uh not really uh, so i already mentioned uh my father's friend who was in physics right so he yeah. was a teacher like a tuition teacher and uh, i think others in my family mostly they are in either small businesses or uh uh-huh. one uh, my maternal um, aunt's father was an engineering professor in svnit surat and uh, my actually grandfather was also working in svnit surat back in his time but that time i don't think i was aware of you know what svnit is or what engineering is or things like that uh, i did not see it as a profession in my home or like outside but i just liked science and technology i liked studying i liked learning new things and i like the idea that i can become whatever i want to become if i become an iitian so that was the main idea why i pursued it and of course my parents were always backing me up i think it's a kind of a dream of every parent if the child becomes an iit and or at least tries hard to become one right or like at least pursue something like engineering uh, in there so my father has done ba and my mother has done bsc um, they, they they are like really i think i would say like smart people uh, but uh, no engineering was just a word for me like till the time i actually started doing it uh, so yeah it was my experience and like, but i like I, i know you have you know told me a lot about it but getting into an iit in india is one of the hardest things for you know a young person studying and you know the acceptance rate is like less than 1 or 2% which is more i mean less than some of the most competitive exams in the world and uh, to really get into iit you can't just start so like jee basically stands for joint engineering entrance exam right and it's joint the exam you give. Yes. and you normally give that exam after the 12th grade mm-hmm. yes uh, so after 12th grade you give the exam and you have one more attempt after that for uh, the advanced section i think for mains you have three attempts that was my knowledge at that time when 
was pursuing it in 2014 2015 and like just for giving the viewers a little background about the iits the iits were part of a national initiative in the 1950s by the government of india to promote technology as a as an option for young indians and to develop the future of the country the first iit was the uh, iit kharagpur and iit roorkee uh, which is the iit that hillary eventually got into as part of five or six institutions that were the premier institutions in our country for about 40 to 50 years and it's extremely hard to get into these institutions and they have some of the best faculty and resources in the country so hillary i'm just curious you know like for let's say there's someone that's in the 7th grade or 8th grade now and they want to prepare for uh, the je and to get into an iit i know today there are about 20 iits and i know there's also an iit in zanzibar and abu dhabi now through an international partnership but it's still very hard to get in so if you were talking to someone that's in the 7th standard now and you had to give them some tips to prepare for the je in that four year period like what were what were some things that you would suggest in, from based on your experience okay so i would say focus on the fundamentals maths is very important like um, maths is something like uh, school maths or i think cbsc or gujarat board maths is i think very simple uh, you just practice it two twice or thrice and you get a hang of it but uh, the kind of foundational maths you need in cracking je or exams like that uh, that requires a lot of practice a lot of patience a lot of love for what you are doing or at least you know motivation for whatever your end goal is so maths is very important foundation foundations like trigonometry geometry algebra these things uh, so there was a book called problems in mathematics that we used to do and uh, it's a very tough book i would say like now i would wouldn't say it is tough but like someone who's in 7th 8th 9th grade for them i think it may be tough uh, but once you start doing it and you have like good mentors then you'll be able to get on with it and it will help you in chemistry as well as math uh, physics uh, because maths is everywhere and you need speed right to solve all these things so i think focus on maths for your earlier preparation period physics and chemistry is something that you can uh, take take on after 10th 11th as well so that's my advice i think and like um, in terms of the exam like how is the exam structured so is it something you give when you're at school or do you have to give it outside school so you you continue studying in like your regular stream and you give the je as well so how does that work uh so it's like an entrance exam like any other so uh i think nowadays you can give when you are in 12th you can give this exam twice um there are two batches in which this happens um but i would not say you know you just do your research on your own uh majorityly uh people are preparing for je mains which is for colleges like nits triple its and others uh for iits you need to prepare for je advanced uh, at least that is what it was in 2014 15 um and je advanced is kind of like tougher uh, version of an exam than je mains so je mains if you can compare it with cbsc then it will be like cbsc plus and then advanced will be cbsc plus 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 so it requires different kind of knowledge or depth of knowledge i would say to clear advanced exams because a lot of critical thinking a lot of out of the box kind of questions come in uh, said by you know professors of iits and people like that so and uh, there are a lot of like plus 6 minus 2 kind of negative marking so you need to be sure about what you need to what kind of questions that you are answering and all these things right it's you can never like guess and get marks by chance it's not an exam like that and like i know in your uh, when we were talking previously you told me like in your bio you mentioned that it was not possible for you to get that required score in your first attempt so mm-hmm. to increase your chances uh, after your 12th grade for a year you moved to kota which is one of the 
premier cities in India to allow mm-hmm. people to train for the JE exams. There are lots of coaching academies there. So how did you think that your preparation improved for the second attempt while you were at Kota? What was different in Kota? I would say in Kota, uh, you get access to exactly what you need to prepare at, le- at least uh, in 11 12th or when you are doing th- these kind of preparations uh, you have like board syllabus you have a lot of textbooks for je like preparation of uh, physics chemistry maths like huge text- textbooks i would say and then a lot of problem sets and like everything is there in the market for je uh, but when you go to kota and uh, when you are in that institute where you get to learn from the best faculty in the in the india in the whole india uh, for physics chemistry maths and uh, the kind of i think material study material that you get the kind of uh, notes uh, that you write in your class that is more than sufficient to cover most of what is asked in ge so you kind of get a very focused kind of a syllabus and of course the faculty is best so whatever you could like in so- city like surat uh, you will get a teacher who's maybe good at uh, in organic chemistry but not so good at physical chemistry there you will get fa- faculties who are like specifically for physical chemistry and uh, in organic chemistry like separate faculty itself um, if there is a uh, topic like optics right so optics is, is a very like it's a very different kind of a topic in physics and you need some visual skills and things like that to actually understand that topic well and in surat you would have like one physics teacher who would teach you everything but there there will be a very uh, i think an expert on that topic that will come and teach you that particular subject so you are learning from the best uh you have limited uh, reference material to actually go through so your confidence increases every month there are exams uh like the entire batch uh, gives the exam 1000 people 2000 people those kind of number of people give that exam you get a ranking you know where you are standing right so these kind of things actually help uh there are two sides of everything so here you actually start getting pressurized if you know you are not getting good ranks and maybe you are not in top classes so there is this whole ranking system i think they have stopped that now but at the, uh, at our time it was there uh, so if you get uh, a rank between 1 to 150 then you are you'll be on in top class uh, and you will be taught by best faculties then 150 to you know and so on like your class number kind of uh, determines how good you are kind of a thing so it's <laughs> it was quite uh, i would say difficult kind of an environment uh, but if you are motivated enough and you get good company then you can uh, always sail through and of, of course like take that as an advantage to make your scores better right yeah and I, I think like there's a lot of ups and downs in that journey based on what i'm hearing the chances of the students getting through in the first batch would probably be a lot higher based on that ranking right like the is that how it is like if you are in the highest class more students like possibly get right. through the yes. like a higher rank right so it's it's sort of their way of saying like these students are probably the most prepared and you need to, you know, get as close to that as possible. Yes. I think what's hard to also contemplate is that it's a very competitive exam. So you have to be really, really on point to be able to get in the top ranks, right? Right. So I like... fortunately had uh, some 18,000 something rank, very insignificant rank in my first attempt. There are only 10,000 seats or something and for general category, half of them, right? So I couldn't get anything in my first attempt, like a seat. But since I had gotten a rank, I automatically got into the first class, first batch in the cohort. And uh, then I maintained that uh, 
rank in the class as well in the monthly exams as well and i had like good bunch of other girls who were like working hard with me uh, we were solving each other's doubts and luckily they were also uh, there in my pg where, where i was staying so we were like staying together we were going to classes together we were chilling together it was a very good kind of an environment i would say i, I would con- consider myself very lucky of having those kind of you know peers uh, there yes, so like now once you gave your second attempt hillary and then once you get a rank so how i know there are like about 18 iits so do you get to choose your iit based on the rank and do you also get to choose your stream based on the rank how does that work and what rank you know were you able to achieve in your second attempt as well all right so in my second attempt i got a rank close to 5000 and uh, so generally like when there used to be like limited number of seats now you know every year the seats are increasing a little bit so it's hard to determine but at that time whatever closing ranks were there for a particular branch in a particular college the earlier year that was kind of a benchmark for you that you know you will get a seat here or there or things like that but based on your current rank so for me uh, if i chose a good iit like a old iit i would say top 7 8 iits that we have in india uh then i would have to choose a field that is not so sort after like uh biotechnology metallurgy geology things like that and if i were to choose branch like computer science or mechanical and things like that then uh maybe i would have gotten that in the baby iits or the new newer iits so generally the process happens like you have a portal um where Uh, you have like all the options all the college options and all the courses options and then you just select the priority in which you want to get admitted so i can say uh, iit bombay computer science as you know my first priority then maybe iit delhi computer science as my second priority and so on i can fill like i can choose all the colleges all the courses that i want to uh, but the thing is that everybody wants iit bombay computer science or iit delhi computer science so the top 100 rankers will get that i will not get that because i have like 5000 rank right uh, so that's how the selection process happens first rank preference is given uh, like seen and your college preference is seen and whatever matches is given to you and like is there a difference between the older iits which is like iit delhi bombay kharagpur uh... rookie you know the the first iits and the newer iits like what you, what would you say is the difference in terms of faculty resources funding because i had another friend that you know cleared the je and he got to choose between iit kharagpur and iit gandhinagar but at kharagpur he was not getting the course he wanted and he wanted to stay closer to home so he chose gandhinagar like what are the differences between the older and newer iits i think the first and foremost difference will be the culture um culture in the sense uh, the older iits already have a lot of uh, clubs and groups uh, that are like dating 20 25 30 years back and a kind of a legacy i would say on like you get to meet alumni from uh, iit rudki who Who, are, who studied 50 years back in your institute right and you can see where they have reached and things like that so i think generally culture and legacy these two things uh, is something that you don't get in a new iit because it's getting established you will be the ones who will actually set up the culture will set up you know new groups and new activities and all these things you will maybe decide where the funding should go if you know students are given that kind of a choice so yeah uh, that difference is always there i would not say there will be much difference between the quality of professors um, but yeah like in terms of seniority maybe you know uh, iit rudki might have like more senior faculty with compared to some other newer colleges i think that's how 
it is otherwise i think course wise you can study from anywhere right? it's it's just uh, obviously yeah, the placement as well so because companies know the name because the companies have been coming to those campuses for a long time uh, it is their you know general practice to go to these colleges then change their i think routine i would say to just go to some other colleges and even the newer uh, iits have lesser number of seats so if you go there you get to choose from a lesser co- a number of cohort than older iits so those differences are there i would say but if your goal is to pursue masters or like higher studies and things like that then that shouldn't matter much other than yeah uh, extra curriculars and yeah those things there is a difference obviously so like and then what stream did you choose and what iit did you decide to go into so i i wouldn't say i had many options uh, but whatever rank that i had uh, i had uh, this choice of uh, a few courses at iit khadakpur a few courses at iit rudki uh, i think i mentioned the name of the courses uh, biotechnology metallurgy geology a uh, geotechnology things like that um, in khadakpur there was marine biology and i was kind of you know more inclined towards getting into an older iit than a newer one because i was not sure about what i wanted to study i just it, it was more like i wanted to live there and learn from others and things like that so i chose iit rudki and that to biotechnology because i was always interested in biology as well uh, but i had to drop that in 11th just so that i could focus on je preparation right so uh it is a very interesting subject and uh, like when i got to know that i'm getting these sub- uh, these courses i read all the course names on the website of iit and uh, i think this one hit the right note i mean i thought you know i, I could be an engineer I, and i could learn biology as well and it was very interesting in that way and uh, also personally like i had this crazy idea Uh, in eleventh, that I would want to go to MIT to pursue research in uh, brain and cognitive science, and uh, the end goal would be to find out how moral values are developed in early childhood, and maybe we can, you know, use that because I think most of the world's problem, as I saw at that time, was mostly because people people think that it is okay to do. things that are not okay right for the society for the good of others so yeah that was kind of a crazy part at that time so biotechnology kind of resonated with that idea as well that um, it is kind of a similar field right so yeah yeah and that's really interesting that you had that sort of ambition right because you're suddenly thinking about not only what you would learn but also how you would apply what you learned in the real world right and like for someone that doesn't know anything about biotechnology if you had to maybe break it down in like a couple of sentences like maybe by telling me some examples of how biotechnology is used in the real world like could you help me understand that generally what is biotechnology and two or three places where it was effectively used in the real world okay i think biotechnology in easy terms is application of whatever we learn in biology as a science so it is the technology aspect of biology so we learn that you know how genetics work right and then we develop methods like ivf and uh, uh gene sequencing and things like that so that is one application like you learn about genes and then you actually learn to how to work with it how to make use of it to uh, maybe cure a disease or to find out if you have a disease or to maybe do uh, gene editing and things like that so there are a lot of uh, interesting concepts there uh then in biotechnology agri and plant side of it also comes so all the application uh, i mean all the hybrid uh, 
agriculture related innovations that we are seeing like increasing yield of crop maybe finding out or or creating a seed that cannot get infected by you know worms and things like that that kind of research also comes under biotechnology that affects us in daily life right? then third aspect is obviously medicine so once we uh, find out i think in medicine also personalized medicine is a very interesting field where biotechnology gets applied where uh, from your genes and from your physic and things like that you actually uh, can gen- create Uh, medicines that are very specific to you and your body right so that is where i think in future that field is going to only grow so these three i think very real applications of biotechnology i would say uh, we are seeing or will see in future and then there is of course like sci-fi kind of uh, use cases where uh, what is it called i'm forgot forgetting the name but uh, someone who is kind of a cyborg but a bio cyborg i would say so you kind of can get superhuman abilities in theory if you learn how to apply robotics in biology right uh, in human or animal uh, world so right now it is already being used as artificial limbs and uh, things like that but yeah in future if we want to if we think about increasing the life span of humans and all these kind of things and yeah biotechnology is something that encapsulates all these kind of uh, ideas let's say you explained it really well alavi like i feel like i got curious about biotechnology now and some okay. of the development so thank you for that but like at iit roorkee what was the student life like at iit roorkee alori and then you know like was there a class you really really enjoyed um and were there some extra curricular activities that you really liked um, at iit roorkee okay so i would like to focus more here on the personal side of my journey as well uh so when i went to uh, iit like a girl who always you know did good at academics and sports and other extracurricular activities and things like that and i went there and i started uh, becoming part of these groups that were formed so one one of the group is called information management group that um, maintains the intranet as well as uh, internet website of the iit and the intranet portal of the iit so it's a group of developers and designers who do this and they already they already have a cool lab at computer science department and uh, all the kind of soft computers they need and all, all the resources they need they have it other designers have a uh, imac uh, the the mac book screen or whatever it is called so yeah so it's pretty crazy kind of a thing that anybody who wants to do anything they get the best things there like if you want to pursue photography you get the best equipments you have the budget you just ask for it you can just take it and you do whatever you want to do it with it so uh, there was one video of my batchmates only like 20 2019 batch uh, that was very famous uh, which was what is it called uh, shape of you dance on youtube uh, so uh, there was cine- cine- cinematography section then there was dance section then there was some other section as well lights and sound section so there are a lot of sections in iit roorkee they collaborated and they they made this video and it hit so many views at that time so you get the best facility and you make the best out of it because you know you you feel that you have worked very hard to achieve this and you should make use of it so extracurricular wise it was fantastic uh, but for me it all became very overwhelming for some reason uh, because i was always i had this appreciation from the you know teachers and 
parents and you know always i got this validation somewhere and when i went there i was nobody like <laughs> whatever i thought i was good at everybody was better than me like most of the people were better in, than me in that particular aspect so it was very hard digesting the fact that you know i have to like i haven't done anything yet i have to do a lot more and i have to choose where i want to shine and you know i want to i, I need to choose my path and again that whole thinking that oh, who should who should i become and like what kind of career path i should choose or what kind of even extra curricular things that i should do things like that came into picture and um, i realized slowly that you know i am an introvert i mean so many people in the campus so many people doing so amazing things and uh, there are so many groups like getting formed that you know this group will be found at this place at this time chilling together and you know a different kind of a scene for together like if you count then i think in iit rudki at that time around 7 to 8000 students would be studying like uh, from first year to fourth year btech then masters then phd's and all these people so you can imagine like the whole campus bustling with people and so many resources and so many i would say aspirations and all these things it was very overwhelming and then for studies as well like i i took it lightly for first year or almost second year because you know i just wanted to have fun and all but my grades were not that great in first second year so then i had to and also like i was doing a, a lot of things uh, and like in iits when you do anything you are expected to give your 100% otherwise you like uh, otherwise don't do it at all it's like that so if you choose multiple things you have to be, give your 100% in multiple things and it then at the at some point in time it becomes like you know you don't you don't have time for yourself as well it becomes like that so that happened to me i was part of like three four campus groups i was also in swimming um and in swimming we do inter iit aquatics meet where you know we compete with other iits uh, in swimming and other sports as well but i was in swimming so morning like one hour one and a half hour you go for preparation like Uh, practice of the swimming and then evening almost two hours like one hour for conditioning strength and things like that and one extra hour for the swimming and then you also go to your classes in the day then in the evening there are a lot of campus activities the groups that you were part of there are general body meetings and what like a lot of things like uh, parties uh, like every group would have their own parties trips uh every group will have it, their own trips and so many things going on and i kind of uh, overlooked my health at that time and uh, i got skin infection uh, very badly and like having my mother as uh, like she is a naturopath and we have never taken any medicine or like nothing has happened to us ever like i haven't been to hospital ever and at that time i came to a situation in second year that you know i was have i was eating medicine like low power medicine nothing was happening then high power dose and then capsules like I, it was first time i ate capsules so i had to go through all these uh, kind of treatments and then it went off like finally i got uh, cured from that disease and at that point in time i thought you know like health is the bare minimum thing that i need to take care of and then i will build in top on top of that one by one like whatever i want to explore and things like that so third year onwards i focused on my grades i focused on my health and um, i also like explored all the different kind of careers uh, career paths there are um, on the internet and like as i said khan academy i love khan academy because uh, i think sal khan has these videos on youtube where or different career paths like how they they are working currently and like 
what is expected from them what the, the day looks like so i i saw those videos and it was very helpful i also like started doing pranayama and yoga which i used to do in school as well like in school we had this class so i was very for- fortunate to learn that and that calmed me down like my mental energy my health everything started coming back to me and at that time i started also reading a lot of books uh, like a lot of time i think self learning kind of time then group activities or <laughs> where you know i just had to run from one place to another and i was not able to actually accomplish anything it was very like exposure wise it was very good and i think those who already uh, knew how to take care of their health and how to juggle between different things and all these things then for them it, it was i think a very good opportunity to sharpen their skills and grow their networks and things like that but for me it kind of took me to some other place uh, where i started reading you know talks on geeta by uh, vinoda bhave what's the point of life and things like that so at that time i think people generally think about life because you you are living alone away from family and what is your purpose in life not just from career perspective or from a child like perspective that you know i want to become a scientist or i want to to become this or do this but actually like what is the point of your life for like what what are your gifts or what is it that you can do for the world and things like that so that was at that time all these things were going on in my mind and uh, finally like i thought that okay civil service is something that i think i should be pursuing because i always wanted to give back to society yeah. like earning by giving back to the society and getting i think good reputation at the same time that i think all things were getting checked <laughs> by civil but i i at that time i think i was very positive or very optimistic kind of on that thing that you know i was able to prepare for it and be able to do it in a year or two or something like that uh, but i think is eventually it got to me that you know so much of syllabus and so many hours of preparation and already i had done je for a long time and now this and it kind of started growing on me that you know are you sure about this and at that time then fourth year came and placements came i was i told my parents that you know i don't want to uh, sit in the placements i want to study for upsc and you know i'll see whatever i I'll, I'll stay at home after fourth year and maybe I'll go to Delhi if I need to. But I want to do this, and even if I don't get IS or whatever, like whatever I get, that will be my, you know, career path that you know I want to serve. So civil service, I think any uh, service you take, uh, you are working for the government. You are working for the people. So it's a I think noble thing to do uh, if you are doing it right. so that was at that time that but yeah my parents kind of told me to sit in the placements and i was i started preparing for it so very i think a moment came uh, where i realized that i wanted to do things because i was seeing impact like i was seeing the impact that i could make on people right that i could make on on society and all these things uh but i was not really seeing at the time that how am i making impact on my family or myself right that realization was not there and it came eventually like very slowly when i started seeing the reality that you know everyone is preparing for the placements and they are not just doing it for money they are they, i don't i don't know why they are doing it or whatever is is it that they are doing it but you know i should also think about earning earning from the point of view that i am earning for myself that kind of a realization i don't i don't know like a most majority of people in my college had that realization at the time when fourth year came and all these things but i never saw money as a motivation or corporate as a place where i could go and you know make my career so it was a very uncomfortable situation i would say to think about placements and to 
think about going to corporate thing about myself earning money for my family like it was always i was always thinking that you know i'll be an iit and i'll be doing i will excelling in whatever i choose and money will just come you know why so that was my thought earlier and then uh, suddenly that that hit me that okay uh, if i do upsc then i'll have to sit at home i'll not be earning i'll missing i'll be missing this opportunity of whatever platform that i got in iit finally people come to iit for placements not for anything like that is the majority of their goal right to get placed in a very good company and all these things so i started preparing for the placements and for various roles that that come for the placements but i was not sure what i wanted to do because i did not want to do, do it. like corporate was not my goal so i cleared a lot of uh exams so i would say um uh, i'll let you know the process of placements in your uh 7th semester uh, a lot of companies just uh, come and uh, take exams like written exams uh where you are asked aptitude uh maybe some case studies if it is a consultant kind of a role or analyst kind of a role uh you are asked maths sometimes you are asked um coding questions if it is a software kind of a role uh, you are asked to submit um maybe presentations or solutions on things if it is a pro- product management kind of a role so all these process i went through it i did not reject any company just because you know because i was not sure so i was sitting in all all the companies that were coming and i was allowed to sit in and i got shortlisted in like seven to eight uh, companies and like after you get shortlisted uh, there is this december 1st like last we uh, last month of november uh, last day of november and december 1st so day 0 day 1 so for then day day to day 3 and uh, so on so those days the actual recruiters come will take your interview so day 0 will be provided to uh, the companies which are maybe paying the highest package and has the like most reputation as recruiters right so they will get to sit sit on day 0 and take the brightest minds from uh, whatever uh, batch there is and uh, so you have interviews lined up from morning till night and it just goes on 24 hours so if you were shortlisted in like three companies in day 0 then you have like three interviews and you just have to sit till your time comes and there's a lot of pressure a lot of people uh, nervous maybe someone crying because they couldn't clear the interview and you know a lot a different kind of uh, scenario you are wearing suit for the first time you are wearing uh placement like uh is it formal shoes for the first time it is very uncomfortable you meet these kind of people like maybe 5 years experience 10 years experience in the industry for the first time in your life and that too they are judging you you are giving them in an interview right so that kind of a setting so i had my first interview in goldman sachs uh as an as an analyst uh on day 0 that i blew up then uh, like i was not confident i was i was like i have not done anything i i don't have any skills why would someone pick me right that was the mindset that i had at that time and then uh day 1 flipkart i had a product management interview and uh, that too i couldn't make it and for the similar reasons like i had asked uh, the reason later on and the interviewer told me you know you were not trying hard enough i was like okay how can i try hard enough when i am not motivated enough to go there right so that was the mental state i was in uh, second day i had more interviews uh, third day more interviews and then a point came where mostly most of the interviews got over like i think 60 70% of the batchmates got placed so at that time we had to write exams once again like some new companies came in and like all the batches that 
क्योंकि एग्जाम्स इन द फर्स्ट लाइक सेवन सेमेस्टर दैट गॉट ओवर ऑलमोस्ट ओवर दैट टू राइट एग्जाम अगेन एंड आई वॉज ऑलमोस्ट ऑन दी वर्ज ऑफ क्राइंग दैट यू नो आई हैव टू डू दिस ऑल ओवर अगेन नाउ ऑल द इंटरव्यूज दैट आई हैड आई ब्लू अप एंड देन आई वॉज लाइक इट्स ओके आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू डू दिस वाई एम 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 आई ट्राइंग टू प्रूव एनी वन दैट यू नो I am the ideal can- candidate for your company because I don't know what you do. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I I would say like I never romanticized it as a career. You know, uh, then how would I convince you that I want to work in this? So I kind of got that. Got into that zone that okay, whatever may may be, and then on day four I had this interview. at uh, microland and uh, i was so calm and so patient and so like at peace with whatever situation and that i had that my interview went well and i got selected uh, in the company uh, so that was the placement experience for me they asked me about my work at like whatever things that i had done in campus i think that's it no no technical questions or uh, things like that so yeah it was kind of a good interview something that i already knew i had to tell i did not have to prepare for it you know some external uh, pages i had to mug and things like that so yeah i got through that and um, so meanwhile in fourth year i had this btech project which is like everyone has to do the final year project um it goes on for two semester and it has like 20 credits or something like almost equivalent to one semester of courses and um, i was doing that under a professor is like still my mentor still i talk to him still i ask him my doubts and help and all these things he's an amazing person he is not in iit rudki right now like he just recently went to the us in some other university uh, but i was pursuing research under him for my btech project and uh, i was thinking that you know uh, science okay i think going back a little to my second year where i did this internship at iit roorkee only uh, in research lab where i did some work in genetics and i did like it i would say it was too slow like too 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 slow you want to achieve something on paper it it looks like you know it, you just have to do this and it takes like 10 days 15 days one month six months and you are nowhere it's just like that in, in biotechnology you need a lot of patience in any re- science related to bio i think uh, you need to be very patient all your experiments are not going to succeed you know even if it's a, just an experiment not even something that you are trying to prove or anything it's just an experiment that also you need to do five times because biological parameters and things like that change right and uh, you fail at these experiments and it takes time to actually achieve what you want to achieve so it was too slow so that point in time i was like dropping the idea or I also like i think i was low in self low on self esteem going to iit seeing these many people that you know the idea of becoming scientist and like it was kind of becoming hazy at that point in time plus i knew that i had to like leave india and uh, go outside to uh, go abroad to study and i think that idea also did not like when you dream about it it's different uh, because you are just thinking that what you will study and all but when you actually want to uh, pursue it or you you start thinking about actually doing it at that time it hits you that you know your parents will be away from you you will be alone um in an unknown country and you know all these kind of things hit you and people say that when you leave india it, you don't come back that easily for some reason and like for the love of the country and for the love of the people i wanted to stay here so that also like kind of uh, turned me against the idea of pursuing higher degrees and doing science so the fourth year project that i had i gave my everything that this is the the only science thing that i'm going to do so i did that i enjoyed that as well but it was of course 
uh, very slow and I couldn't make any impact from it because it was just a year long project right so people like take four years five years in PhD and still just discover a very teeny tiny thing in science or let alone like generating actual impact where your discovery will be used to maybe do something and for like thousands of people across the country right that's something that I think many few scientists would be achieving in their lifetime so that idea dropped and then yeah microland was waiting for me like recruited uh, as a next generation technology cadre that is like graduate engineer training kind of a role uh, in the company so in the vacation in the fourth year vacation I, I studied a little about uh, still the UPSC thing like a little UPSC thing but yeah I was like this is a final vacation that I will get in my life so I have to make the best out of it I was spending time with family and all these things and I went into uh, the company and uh, they had a really great training program uh, for two three months so because they knew that the people that they are recruiting they they are not from IT background or like they, they haven't studied computer science or engineering like that so we were taught at this point you're like graduated from IIT Roorkee like yes, yes, then yes. you start the training Yes. So like like once you were done with IIT Roorkee mm-hmm. and you got that placement at Microland. So mm-hmm. now um, I know for the last six to seven years, you know, I, it was so amazing to hear your journey at IIT Roorkee. Hey, Lori, I I feel like I was a student there when you were narrating it. Like some okay. of the things I picked up when you were talking was that um, like IIT is such a stimulating environment to be in, but it can also be so overwhelming because. There are so many, you know, amazing, smart people around you and they're all, you know, so aspirational. They have so many dreams and ambitions. So the way you were able to balance, you know, choosing your priorities and, you know, choosing, you know, because it's also a time when you have so much to explore as a young person, right? So you have to, you can also go down the wrong path, you know, so like, it's really important to have family and, you know, like some sort of grounding at that point. So I feel like, but you also were able to, you know, share like a very honest, vulnerable part of how it's not easy once you get into IIT as well, right? You have to work, you have to work hard on the placements, you have to work hard on your course. And I really like that last story you said about understanding maybe academia wasn't for you, you know, like scientific research also has a rigor. And I think the favorite part I really enjoyed was that you said that you wanted to stay back you know, in the country and really contribute like from the country because, you know, when you are in IIT, the world is open up to you, right? You can uh, take any opportunity. And I think that was really like, like patriotic and really powerful to see how you wanted to stay back and contribute, you know, to the country. So, so much I got from that, you know, that story you shared. Like now, once you graduated from IIT, I know you've been working as a software engineer for seven years. And your first three or four years were at like a lot, five years, five years. Okay. But like you will, like, you can tell me more. I'm really curious about your time as like a software engineer, but you first worked in a large multinational corporation. Now you are working at a startup. So, you know, could you tell me like, what is the, what was your experience coming in as a graduate and how did you get to the point you are at in your career right now? Like, what was this five-year period like for you? So, for me, I think I need to be curious or interested in whatever I'm doing. Otherwise, you know, I just don't see a point in doing that at all. Like, I don't see a point in doing something because I'm getting something I don't want or, you know, I don't know. Like, that is the mindset that I've always done things uh, with. And in this uh, journey at uh, Microland, where I was uh, part of as a cohort of uh, fresh graduate trainees, uh, we actually got an opportunity to learn computer science principles and things like that uh, from scratch uh, in like a couple of months. Uh, that was very application oriented, like how it will be applied in work, right? Not just academically, like they are teaching us, but 
actually the actual application of it i learned so much about uh, computers that like i had this opportunity in the groups that i were in earlier as well but somehow i couldn't like hit that uh, you know spot where i found that you know this is something really interesting that that did not occur when i was in college uh, but here um, i think the 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 teachers were very like they, they were amazing they were very uh, supportive uh, they let us ask any questions that that was there and uh, since i had nothing to lose like i did not have a reputation to make uh, or like i i was not thinking myself as part of the corporate world or i was staying here for a long time because you know i was thinking in back in my head you know maybe civil services civil services but anyways like i was there and uh, they were teaching and they were encouraging us to ask questions so i was really into it like i was asking questions and uh, then i went home i was going home and uh, learning more on the internet as well so there is this series of computer science on crash course which is like very interesting very very interesting so if you start off with computer science then if you view that like youtube series then it will make you really fall in love with you know the science that it is so it happened with biotechnology and then now it happened with computer science as well fortunately that you know i was i was going into fundamentals of things like how things actually worked i never imagined that you know phone i'm using or the laptop that i'm using whatever whatever applications that i'm using there is some data center out there where you know some server is running and some disks are there which are storing my data uh, there are a lot of people who are like working 24/7 to maintain that thing and there are a lot of programmers who are making this so that i can actually you know watch youtube and learn from the internet and that kind of thought only came at that time when you know i think i learn from teachers or you know like someone who is teaching like literally teaching the subject uh, more than learning from references or some youtube videos and things like that so that real connection really helps it also like i have i've always been a good kid i said so i always pay my full attention in any class that i go to so doesn't matter like how boring i found it find it or how interesting i find it my attention is always 100% that has that kind of magically moved me into the direction that this is also an interesting field right and then after like a few months of training we were given a choice to join some team uh like there were a lot of teams um and managers from those team came and explained what kind of projects they were doing and then we had this choice to actually choose where we wanted to go and uh, i couldn't choose anything <laughs> uh, there were a lot of opportunities but uh, then i ended up into a very cool project that was happening uh, so microland is a services based company and they were trying to build products um and this is their this was their idea that we'll have hire from from the best minds of india like we will hire best minds of india and then we'll make products uh that will actually grow our business in that direction so i got into that team and uh, there were highly motivated people like all of us all of them i think somewhere we connected because the the hr round that happens in interviews uh they actually have a very good sense of who like how they want to define the culture when they are hiring right or, or like who will fit in the, in that culture and uh, that also happened with my interview in microland and all the people that joined they were very like we were connecting at very, like various le- levels and we were like very similar kind of mindset kind of people so i was enjoying more here then maybe i had enjoyed in iit i would say because there uh, you are constantly you know part of so many things and there are so many kinds of people and you don't focus on a small group and try to learn from you know that small group or at least i couldn't at that time so here i got that opportunity and uh, 
we were like a team of uh, 10 12 people and uh, we started off building products for uh, microland and it was amazing like uh, you find out opportunities talking to different departments like what kind of difficulties they are facing and what, what kind of solutions we can build and then you learn about programming and then you try to apply that uh to solve a particular business uh use case right so that was also something that kind of like i i, I thought that okay this is some some at some level impactful like i'm not able to maybe do impact on millions of people but i am if i learn this skill if i learn building something uh like this like some digital or it product right if i try to learn building softwares then maybe i can make an impact in a very small way but then like if i choose in future to work on a pro- problem which is faced by a lot of people on the earth then software is the way because software solutions can reach like across the countries and like across the borders and things like that so that hit me and then like slowly i tried to learn the craft better uh, so in college i was i was told by my parents and uh, others as well that you know uh, jobs apart job opportunities are only in software mostly when it comes to placements right i was like everybody is doing that why should i do that you know what 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 kind of different impact would i be able to do if i do this uh, there are so many people in country and like elsewhere who wants who want to become software engineer so how is my path any better how how like i always wanted to be extraordinary or different or unique and like that was my mindset so this particular field i was constantly dodging whenever i was coming to that area where you know i could think that, that okay this could be and i was constantly dodging it just for whatever mental blockages i had made for myself um uh, but i came here and then i realized that you know it matters like what you choose to work on and like what kind of skills you build it matters and uh, i think that point in time i started building i like started working on building skills uh people in college i think nowadays start learning data structures and algorithms and a uh, lot of like com- full stack development and things like that i started it at my second or third year of career journey and uh, yeah it, it was interesting like learning all these things was interesting and the good part was that i was able to apply it uh, in my day to day job as well so it kind of like i kind of um, liked what i was doing and then i slowly figured out that okay if i want to really make an impact then i have to uh, maybe also learn entrepreneurship and you know uh, do something of my own or at least join hands where people are doing something that really matters to them right so at at that point in time i i figured that you know maybe i should think about uh, getting closer to those kind of people right uh, making connection in that direction and uh, then flowox happened like i got selected as a software engineer there we are a very small team like 10 15 people so there we were a 10 15 people team building a product in a such a big organization and here we are a team of like the company itself is 10 15 people uh yeah of size so yeah it's it's amazing looking at these young people so our co-founders are only uh 30 31 year of age and still they are making products or they are like at least thinking about products that can actually work at scale that can work for uh, big organizations and i'm learning a lot from like both developing software side as well as how to maybe raise money how to talk to investors how to take your company in different directions as you know different situations arise 
how to stay true to your vision so these kind of things how to hire people how to keep people happy uh, that you are you have hired so these kind of things i'm able to learn when i'm here so yeah it's been an incredible journey and i'm, I'm really appreciating whatever i think choice whatever happened till now and you know where i am just because something or the other happened you know i think like what's fascinating to hear Hillary, is that when you started at microland like you were not very uh, competent with computer science but you know you were brave enough to start from scratch and develop the skills you know to get to a point where you were like a competent developer and then build an entire career because moving from biotechnology to computer science i mean there are two different i mean the foundations of all scientific fields are physics chemistry math uh, like physics and math largely right but i don't think it's easy to you know it's because you were not only transitioning to study it you were actually doing a job as a computer science developer while you were learning about it right so i think just how vulnerable you were and open you were to acquiring skills i think that's something a lot of you know young people can really learn from and i think like for a, for a young software developer in india elori like what is the career path you know like you can start off at a company and you become the cto is that the path most software developers follow or do most people like somewhere in their mid career you know go off into like an entrepreneurial path where they want to build and start their own thing so what is the career graph for a software developer or you know a programmer in india so what happens is when you start as a software developer uh, it depends where you are starting uh like is it a startup is it a mid level company is it a large company is it a company like fang right so uh, at every different companies you kind of develop different kinds of skills so in a scenario in startup it doesn't matter what technologies you are using as long as you are getting done whatever is required for the business right you are constantly maybe um learning something new and applying it and just that's that's how you are growing and like wherever there is a need uh, whether whether it is in designing the application or uh designing the architecture of the application or uh doing devops kind of a work where deployment of the application is coming into picture or maintaining the cloud so there is just one role for it, software engineer that that person has to do everything when the you know uh, time comes and when the situation uh, starts uh, going in that direction so you cannot say no that you know i'll only focus on building this application in python because i know python and i have learned python and you know i, I want to be skilled at python so i will only do this that doesn't work in a startup uh in mid to large organizations so mostly like the kind of uh, projects that you are doing they they will get you those projects based on your skills and you get to go like in depth in those set of skills and learn more about it and be expert at it um so two different kind of scenario right as you progress in your journey in your software developer path there are different kind of titles so associate software developer software developer um senior software developer of it and in companies like amazon it is sd1 sd2 and things like that uh, so just as you become more senior uh, the the responsibility of the code that you are writing that piece of code that you are writing that like becomes larger like you are responsible for larger chunk of the product right and as you progress uh, in startups you have this dual kind of a role like if you are an engineering leader then you have to manage people as well as work on the architecture of the product so you are responsible end to end engineering kind of a situation right uh, from mentoring people from like doing their performances and all these things to actually doing arch- like deciding the design of the product and designing like all the different parts of it um choosing like who should work on what and 
like doing the project management for it, it as well that when should we do this and all these things so those kind of things a startup leader engineering leader would do uh, you can call them a cto or engineering lead or things like that uh, in mid mid companies or large companies generally there are two different uh, roles at which you go to so after 3 to 4 years of or 5 years of experience if you just want to do engineering management then you can go into that direction where uh, you will be responsible in leading the team in doing a certain thing like basically delivering a certain uh, software piece uh, and you'll have to like maintain uh, the timeline of the project and the number of people that are there and what they will do and things like that you will not be essentially coding right um, and then there is second path where you still decide to stay as an individual contributor and uh, you want to work on the larger picture the architecture of the product and how they are integrated with maybe other products and things like that so at that time you will be coding you will be designing and uh those kind of things like you will be solving the hard problems that maybe junior developers cannot uh, at the company and uh, in even larger organizations i think there is like separation even more granular separation here so yeah i mean at the end of your career you can become a cto or you can choose to stay an individual contributor and an expert in that particular field that you have chosen to master so there are a lot of people who have like 20 plus plus year of experience 25 plus year year of experience and still they are choosing to stay an individual contributor and not take leadership roles and only work on like very difficult technical challenges that the company is facing and still getting paid a lot because of their expertise right so i think that's it and yeah. like, uh, you can always move to generic roles like like product management or uh project management and things like that uh irrespective of you are software developer or designer or uh, maybe analyst right so these kind of people work closely with project managers product managers and maybe one of them only become and go to this these kind of roles as well where like in project management you are responsible for the timeline of the project and everything and in product management you are responsible for solving the problem that is given to you from the business right so yeah any questions here yeah that that makes a lot of sense elori i think you broke down the career path you know and i feel like one hour went by so fast and you know thank you for you know staying a little longer elori i'm, I'm sorry for keeping you you yeah, know yeah. here but last question mm. i had elori was you know like i'm curious about people that have inspired you and because there are so many successful iitians in our country you know whether it's kiran bedi or um you know who's a successful ips officer you know sundar pichai who's leading google but not just iitians i know you know like sal khan is someone that inspired you like is there someone that you look at and you see that their impact in the world is something that you know you would like to emulate and I know you mentioned the book you read at college but was there another book or you know like a film that really inspired you and shaped your thinking So I have actually written down a lot of things that have inspired me because I know that you know if people get like this is the best part like if you maybe go through what I have gone through and maybe get inspired from that then nothing better than that like personal journeys are always you know you learn something and that you move on like uh, in life but these kind of things actually make impact on you so i would like to like say and give a few examples so there was a book called creativity incorporated if you have heard about it so someone from pixar uh, has written it and uh, they have written on how pixar works and pixar is like one of the best companies i look up to because the kind of movies that they are making like uh, finding nemo and coco and like uh, all these amazing movies that children are seeing and i think the part that i was thinking about na developing 
moral responsibility ethics and things like that and to do in order to do that do cognitive science research and all these things i think just making these amazing movies they are achieving that right i mean these movies are so fun to watch and you kind of get into the character and then you kind of learn a lesson or two about life at an age where you know you need that the most so uh i think i love pixar movies and i have learned a lot from them even now i watch whatever new movie that comes in and uh, one particular thing that they re- they wrote in that book was explore the neighborhood which is like don't just keep thinking about all the paths that you have like if you have like four paths that you have to choose from uh don't spend on time just sitting there thinking that you know what will happen if i choose this what will happen just go ahead go two steps in that path come back if that doesn't work out go ahead in some other path come back if the, that doesn't work out spend time in doing things not thinking about them and i spent a lot of time thinking about things when i was in campus that you know who who will i become what career path i will choose this and that and if i had like maybe developed an application or maybe done a small internship at some ministry or i don't know like some small small bits in whatever careers path that i had right then it would have been so easy for me to just put a pen on that you know this is what i want to do um so i think that's the very, that's a very important thing like if you are just graduating or you are like you have already graduated and you are thinking like what career path should i choose just choose whatever there is start learning about it start doing things not just learning start actually applying that um maybe do a small project for someone just find people like people are always there to give you some projects or the other to do it for free right like uh, a lot of people want a lot of things to be done and if you really go out there are a lot of people who will help you with the problem statement and you can actually work on them so start looking for those kind of opportunities and start experiencing that field because whatever notions that you have about that field comes from a general consensus but for you personally how would you feel it because you are a very different person than you know, everyone else in the world and your motivations would be different your idea of fun would be different your idea of satisfaction would be different so just try it out and see where it leads you then actually listening to people that you know this field is very great come come this field and no it is great for them not you so you have to figure it out on your own right so overthinking right just yes, like don't it. don't even overthink it just give it a shot that's it so that was one thing that i learned and i think i would really really want my 18 years self to you know know that you know you you don't have to choose things once you can choose it multiple times you can go wrong you can fail in something you can come back you can choose something else and that's the i think beauty in the kind of era we are living in because everything is available on the internet you no longer have to go to a university to learn anything it was difficult back then when when you know in in our pa- parents uh, situation where you cho- chose something and you had to stick 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 with it because there were very little opportunities but now it is not like that now you know you can be a software engineer then you can turn into com- com- becoming a com- comedian or like anything like that uh, is possible in this world right so it's a very good place to be in and to make the best use of it you have to just jump in uh, at any scale that that is possible for you and not just overthink and do pros and cons because until and unless you actually do it you will never know what is it so that's one <laughs> then so i had this notion that you know i want to learn everything i want to do everything uh, i want to wear different hats i'm not a kind of person who will go in depth in something uh, and maybe like a lot of people would resonate resonate with that that you know you enjoy doing things when it is new 
as soon as it go, gets older you feel like you are stuck right you don't want to go, go ahead in that you want to try something else uh, and that happened to me but at least in the field of software engineering i would say that like because that's something that i've tried right not something else but i think most of the modern career paths that are there including computer science and mostly i'm talking about computer science because of my experience every day you get to learn something new every day you get to build something you have never built before every day is like obviously not like every day but most of the days uh, you feel uh, very energetic about doing what you're doing because you know it's always new so those who think that you know being a generalist is fun than going into depth actually when you experience that that depth uh, which is real like the water is so deep that you can never actually go down the you, you can never hit the ground right it's just going on and on and on it's it's not like you will hit a pretty or something so uh going in depth is also not, not that bad and in fact it's even more better because you get a lot of confidence by being good at something right like you if you can say that you know i am good at this particular thing then that gives you a lot of self confidence whatever you say like that, that you you do these five things and all and if you know that how good you are in that those five things not not at all good because if you are working or dividing your time among amongst those five things right so yeah i mean doing one thing and getting better better at it and that also gives you satisfaction is what i would want to say uh to my younger self as well so i think all the people in college who are thinking that you know i'll get bored in choosing one career and all these things it's not like that and if you are in a company or in a situation where it is happening then you just change your environment that's it there are a lot of environments where there is real growth where there is real opportunities where there are things that you would really care for building right so just choose that uh, over that dead end that you feel you are at right guys so this earning money part right how how much money you should earn like how much is enough or mm. things like that i think on that point i was also kind of uh, confused as to you know whatever i'm earning is enough i should not like look for new opportunities or maybe things like that so that mindset i had but then i realized eventually that if your closest set of people like the people in your family people in your friends group and all these things if they are deriving value from that particular thing that you know how much x person is earning or how much uh, because you are part of family so you get to spend it together right the money so how much you should earn so if they have a certain idea about that and you your idea is very vague that you know it is enough for me why should i care and all these things and if they have some dreams or something to achieve then don't feel ashamed in chasing money for them like just just be at peace that you know uh, i'm doing it for myself but if i don't want it for my family and it's fine like you don't have to be burdened that you know uh, i just want to make good impact on the society and like this is for i think very specific mindset oriented people i would say this advice who feel i think jagriti yatra all all the people in jagriti yatra might uh, resonate with this thing that you know how much impact i should make versus how much money i should make because all the paths don't lead to everything right you have to choose sometimes so sometimes we feel guilty that we're you know earning too much and we think that we're not doing enough good so i think it doesn't always have to be like so black and white right i think you do need money to lead a comfortable life and i don't think it's a bad thing to you're not being selfish you're just looking out for your own family and your own goals right when you are earning and if you put in the effort and added so much value i think it's only society's way to show you that 
your value is equal to this much like money right. in a lot of ways absolutely right and yeah. once you are at peace with people around you like the people that care for you and you care for them uh doesn't matter money or maybe you know where are you situated like where you want to actually go and work um yeah. and things like that whatever it is i think that's when you actually start thinking and putting efforts into what you really want to do otherwise most of the time it's just a mental struggle i want to do this but they want me to do this i want to do this but they... so just work on it i think and uh, do it and you will not feel that bad actually <laughs> while you do what uh, if if they are your well wishers and you do what they want you to do so, so i think that is something that i realized very late in my journey um, i read this book called karma yoga by uh, karma yoga by vivekananda and uh, that led me to this thinking uh, so most of the learnings that i have had is mostly through books movies or you know things like that because i don't usually uh, go out and communicate with people so i, I feel like i am learning a little late things in life but then it also feels very i would say good that you know i'm learning on my own uh, things that i care about anyways that's one thing uh, i think third thing that i talked about and uh, sometimes i would say choosing what to do like the career path that you want to choose uh, or whatever like every day you want to do things it's more important with whom you are doing it than what you are doing like if i am i'm not a software developer and i'm doing something else anywhere uh, in the world i think I'd, i'd be just fine if like every day i go and people smile at me and then they think about me they care about me they uh, put in efforts in my growth and uh, you know just just that I think we all need just that so don't put too much pressure on what you want to become or what you want to do because sometimes you don't have a choice one uh, because a lot, a lot of career path don't lead you to a bit a better life or the life that you deserve uh, and second uh, sometimes you thought you would like it but in reality you might not like it and still like if there are people around you uh, that you are happy with then that particular work will also be it's easy like you will you will have fun you will enjoy it so just choose your people out there then profession or anything else so i i have always made sure of this thing that whenever i give an interview uh i interview that person as well from that point of point of mind that you know how this person will be with me when i join the company so the wing the hr round from your end is also very important you usually you want to yeah end up in good company right so good company at good company so that's also there then yeah one thing that has helped me a lot uh, during this journey is have you have you watched uh, finding nemo yeah that's my i like that those are two of my finding nemo and finding dory I yeah like both of so finding nemo there is this uh, scene where dory says you know do you know whale language i know whale language i will talk to the whale in whale language you remember that scene so that uh, so that kind of inspired me in some way that even if those people whom you think as whale well, like whom you think as big shots in their field or you know in in world in the world itself even though you think you cannot talk to them gain courage to talk to them and maybe you will get your direction so i have written like long emails to at one point in time in my college i wanted to go in mit media labs where which were innovation like they work on technology 
technological innovation in different cross functional departments and there was someone called nori X- oxman she, she was working on biomaterials and like imagine buildings are not concrete but biomaterials like for example uh, bees stay in the hive that they have created right from their biomaterial so she was working on those kind of projects and it was so cool like you get no uh, waste from where you live right because that is going to decompose in 200 years or something so that kind of a thing so i wrote a very long email to her uh, when i was in first year of my company like my my professional journey because i was very clueless what i wanted to do and uh, i wrote that long letter uh, and i specified like different things why i am doing this or what should i do and all and it gave, gave me clarity i never got a message from her or reply from her but it gave me clarity what i wanted to do or like at least it helped me going somewhere then there are people on linkedin that i reach out to like i said khan academy is something that i really uh, appreciate like as a force doing something in this world and there is some indian there is an indian office of khan academy in delhi and there was a product manager there so i messaged him uh, and i talked to him like what it is like working there and all these things and he actually replied and we talked a lot long uh, for a long time yeah and uh, i said you know i'm not a good software developer um so and and also i'm not interested that much uh, what should i do like is product manager management like is that role a nice role something like that i had written and it was like he said one thing you are not a good software developer yet so that learning i mean that thing struck me that you know okay i am not there but i can i, I will get there eventually if i want to so that was a big motivation that you know even they are not demeaning any other field that you know i am doing great work and you are not because you are just building software for some mnc or things like that right so that was much of a learning that i had and i have like messaged a lot of people uh, on linkedin and they have replied as well uh, sometimes i've learned from them sometimes i haven't but it it kind of gave me clarity that i want at that point in time so i would say that is also a good practice if you are like an introvert and you don't talk to people a lot uh, then this is a very good way to actually learn from the best because i don't think people will be messaging them a lot i mean people will generally think that you know why why would someone like that reply to me but when you actually send the message they will re- like there are chances that they will reply and you will be able to learn something or the other because people are that you just you get scared right you think huh. that they're too big to give you any yeah. importance yeah. but you give it a shot you never know maybe they also want to share like knowledge hmm. and information yeah. so i call that learning the whale language and <laughs> it works for me <laughs> uh then there are a few like there are a, a lot of things that i learned from naruto uh, the anime show i think a lot of people have are already seen, like, all the episodes sorry yeah, yeah, i've seen all the episodes hmm. and i had seen the episodes when i was in school as well i think it was okay. uh, streaming on some channel at that time but it was just the first part like the the orochimaru arc like, till there uh, the show was there but after that it was not uh accessible or streamed or something like that and then when in covid i had a lot of time a lot of free time so i watched everything and it it was like very motivating so i was kind of giving up the idea of doing good in the world because i was stuck in a software job and thinking about impact at a very small scale now like i started thinking about impact at a very small scale but that led me again to that direction that okay my goal should be that it's okay for now if i'm doing impact of this much my goal should never be this you know it should always be this i'll reach there eventually someday so that's yeah, something 
And I, I remember we also worked on a project when we were, so Jagriti Yatra will be that year. We were both part of the online cohort. It's yes. an amazing initiative for young Indians that the actual program is you can travel across India, you meet entrepreneurs uh, and you we got to see like, you know, like the eye hospital and I think it was in South India. Then it was just so amazing to see so many young Indians. And I think me and Hilori were part of a group that worked on a small business idea related to teaching. And we actually got like a prize for that idea. Right. And I think... I think it's nice to see how you are always on the lookout for opportunities where you can add and create value, right? Lori, I think that, and I think in, in India now, there are so many initiatives and I feel like people underestimate the power of a platform like LinkedIn as well. You know, I feel like so many people uh, write and want to share knowledge on LinkedIn. And I think for professional growth, it's a great way to connect with people too. And like, you know, like, for, like, I wanted to conclude this with any final thoughts that you have, Elori. I think, you know, I can chat with you for so long, but any final thoughts uh, before we conclude the episode? Maybe like this can be like a final thought for Elori when she was 18. You've already given me so many points. But if you had to say something to that Elori when she's starting off her journey, like what would be like one piece of advice or motivation for her? I think it's good to dream about things, to dream about being extraordinary, to dream about making big impact and all these. But it is also very important to be at peace at the point where you are in life. Because you cannot do everything today or tomorrow. It takes time. You need to give time to yourself to learn things, to seize those opportunities that can come anytime anywhere build that confidence that you can maybe do some xyz thing someday and it takes time and if you just keep on overthinking about things that you know the current situation i'm just an ordinary i'm just a ordinary software developer at a startup where like millions of people are in the world right but uh that doesn't that will actually never help you get where you want to you need to make peace and only then your mind gets clarity what to do tomorrow to actually be there when you want to be there so i think that's the that's what i have learned in i think my entire life now like this is the point where i am right now i'm making peace with whatever i know whatever i'm doing wherever i am because you always think about these big, big people and, you know, the big things that they have done. But they were also at some point in life, at point where you are, that you just overlook, right? So yeah. that you should not. And that just, it just saves so much time and energy, right? To just yeah. cherish where you are and just be satisfied with that moment in life yeah. that positive note we conclude this uh, wonderful episode of uh, learning stories i've learned so much from hilori and her journey i will be linking her linkedin profile in the show notes you know she does write and share her thoughts periodically on that platform i've learned a lot from her journey reading her journey but also talking to her today and for the listeners tuning in do stay uh, tuned for more such episodes of amazing young indians doing powerful things to shape the future of our country. And on that note, uh, I would like to end this episode of Learning Stories. Thank you, Abhishek.